So to lead us off, without any further ado, it's my very great pleasure to introduce you to someone, to our opening speaker, Dr. Teresa Garrett. So let me give you a little bit of background on Dr. Garrett. So um, Teresa Garrett is our uh, Vice President of Academic Affairs, and she's also Dean of Sweetbriar College. So uh, Dr. Garrett graduated summa cum laude and with honors in biochemistry from Florida State University, and she earned a PhD in biochemistry at Duke University. She's published or co-published three dozen journal articles and has served as a reviewer for the National Science Foundation and for numerous academic journals. Dean Garrett is the heart of the academic life here at Sweet Briar's campus. She serves as both a leader for the faculty, but she's also an incredible champion for students just like you. Best of all, however, you will find that she is an incredibly genuine and real person. As a student on campus, you're likely to see Dean Garrett walking the dairy loop, biking the trails, or in serious running training. Um, but you'll also find that she's an incredible listener. She's a great problem solver. She has constant open office hours to ensure that students are not only learning, but that they're thriving at Sweetbriar College. So it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Teresa Garrett, uh, Dean of the College. Hi, everybody. It's so great to see you. Um, I don't know what to say after that introduction. I'm like, oh, it's a little bit of high pressure. <clears throat> but um, I think that the one thing I want to say to you all is that the only reason that I am here at Sweetbriar is to elevate students to be amazing and to elevate women to be amazing. Um, so I just, I think if you can remember that about me, and about what I'm trying to do here, then I will have successfully achieved what I want to achieve by talking to you today. So that's the, uh, that's the, the thing that would be on the test if we're going give, to give you one at the end. Maybe, maybe Savannah or uh, Mandy can put a quiz up at the end of this and uh, see if you got it. Um, I just, I just want to say a few things um, so, so that you know where I'm coming from as a as the leader of the academic program. Um, one is, there's, this is a special time for women. Um, many of you probably know that on August 18th, we will celebrate a really momentous occasion in the lives of women in this country. And that is the 100th anniversary of women having the right to vote. Uh, and we're gonna have a celebration. It's gonna be right in the middle of orientation. Um, something big is gonna happen because this is a big deal. And this was something that was fought for by women. Um, they marched and lobbied and marched and lobbied and protested until they got their way. And I think about that also in the context of where we are right now, which is um, a pandemic in which women are in many of the frontline roles that are paving the way for us to get through this. They're the teachers, they're the doctors, they're the nurses, they're the people who work at the CDC, they're the politicians who are lobbying for um, the kind of testing and access to health care and safety that we all need right now. So I see women coming out on the other side of the pandemic um, looking really good. And our role here at Sweetbriar is to be very deliberate in preparing women to go out in the world and be leaders. And when I talk about leaders, uh, I, I'm not just talking about the person who's out in the front standing on the podium, rah, right? Or, you know, sword on the horse. I'm talking about the way women lead that is uh, more subtle and so effective. They're on the sides, they're in the middle, they're behind, they are in front. And women need to be in front and they deserve to be in front. And we should be pushing to be in front. But we should also recognize that leadership that happens within is equally important. And our leadership core, which is our general education program of 10 courses, is really designed to help you to have the skills and the habits of mind, the way of thinking, the approach to the world 
that's going to make you be a really impactful leader, whether you're in any of those leadership positions, um, and all of you will be in this world. So we are really deliberate about teaching that to students through this um, in a really exciting way. We have courses that are teaching you how to think outside the box, our design thinking course, to write and speak persuasively, to understand economic systems and monetary systems, because you got to be able to like manipulate those, how to look at data critically. How, ma how many of you have seen data on COVID-19, right? And how some people are using it one way and another person is using it a different way. And it's all like, I need you as graduates of this college to be the ones who can dig through that and find the straight path to move us forward as a society. So we're going to equip you with all of those skills and also in the context of thinking about ethics and philosophy, how this sits broadly in the historical context, both for uh, the world, but also um, uh, our society and our communities in general. And we're going to ask you to think about what does it mean to be a leader through our Consequential Citizen course. So there's all different ways that we're working on this in a really deliberate way to sculpt a time here for you to be coming out with a set of skills, a way of thinking, an approach to the world that's going to be meaningful and deeply impactful. Because I want you to leave here and do amazing things. That is why I get up in the morning to go to work. I get up because today's going to be the day I'm going to help a woman become amazing. So, I mean, I, 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 I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I honestly do. We have a really uh, fun calendar where we divide our term into this 3-12-12-3 um, breakdown where we have a three-week immersive term where you take one course and you dive in deep and you spend a lot of time with your class and your faculty to really deeply dive into a, a topic. As first-year students, um, you would take design thinking all together, all the first years take it together and uh, work on this uh, way of thinking, how to solve problems, how to work as a team, how to, um, you know, come up with ideas that had never been thought of before. And then we have the 12 week term where you take usually about four courses. Um, it's more sort of the traditional college. Uh, that goes into another 12-week term in the spring and then finally capped off with a three-week immersive term. Uh, in, in the best of times, we're sending students off around the world during those three-week terms. We've had students go to Rome to study art history. Uh, we've had students go to Washington to have this behind-the-scenes experience with the Smithsonian. We had students who were going to Paris um, so those three-week terms are also opportunities to do things um, off campus and um, have really deep, meaningful experiences, both with faculty and with other students. As you saw in all those amazing pictures, and I, I have to say, the pictures don't capture it, right? You, you know that when you've seen something in person, there's that thing that happens that's I don't know, it's our whole body experiencing it. And as amazing as those pictures are that Medford and Cassie have taken, and they are amazing, they don't evoke that thing that being here on, in this place does. So I really hope that for those of you who haven't had the chance to come here in person, and I'm just so sorry that's been the circumstance, that you will hear what I'm saying and trust that being here on campus is an experience that you don't want to miss. We have 3,200 acres. We have an apiary where we harvest honey, a wildflower meadow so the uh, pollen, uh, the bees can go have, get the pollen to go make the honey. <laughs> we have a 25,000 foot greenhouse that's getting uh, up and running to grow food that you would eat in our dining hall. And we have uh, 20 acres of uh, grapes that are planted to start to produce a viticulture program. Students are getting involved in all aspects of this agricultural side, and we're using it as a way to develop leadership in students. 
So maybe not all of you are interested in growing things or agriculture, though it's a great business and uh, career to go in for women, but that's fine. Doing all of these different things uh, can help you to become a leader in whatever field you want to be involved in. And there's ways to be involved in it that are not about getting your hands dirty. You could be involved in developing a business plan for the greenhouse with our economics and business faculty or going out and photo photographing it with uh, Medford Taylor who teaches a di digital photography class or a landscape painting course in which we'll have faculty teaching um, that skill. No matter what your approach, there's gonna be something for you here um, that's either um, gonna be related to the agricultural enterprise or not, we we'll create opportunities for you. Before I stop talking, and I want to because I'd love to hear your questions, um, I just have to talk about the faculty here. I've been at many colleges and universities in my career and met many faculty, and there are none like the Sweetbriar faculty. I just, that's just, that's just it. Um, they are deeply committed to students. They put their hearts and souls into helping you to become just great. They want you to succeed. They're there for you to help. They, they want to help. The thing that I spend a lot of time in my office talking to students about is go talk to your faculty, go, 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 go. <laughs> and when, when students do that, it's all great, right? I can do certain things that's useful and helpful and I'm always happy to do that. And sometimes I need to step in, but a lot of times it's mostly just like, go talk to your faculty. They will be the ones who will get you through, through, through this hard class, through this hard time. Um, we'll all work together to have that success be within your grasp. Um, they also do fun things. We have the car boat, cardboard boat regatta in the fall that's done through the uh, engineering program. I'll tell you, that was a sight to see with these boats made of cardboard with students in the lake. Anyway, they were sinking, a lot of them were sinking. It was really fun. And also a way in which they learned, right? A way in which they learned how to take a set of materials and make the best of them to, you know, row back and forth between the docks. Um, we have faculty in economics that are focused on entre entrepreneurship and leadership, um, doing change maker events with students. Our faculty in English and creative writing are pushing students to improve their writing skills, express themselves creatively. We have a, a faculty member who's teaching blacksmithing so that students can make blades. <sighs> And I'm so excited about that. <laughs> I just think that all women should know how to make a blade. Maybe that's just me. Um, our music faculty are, are doing musical performances with students in this way that's so creative and inclusive. I just, I just find it so amazing. All of your courses are taught by committed faculty. They are your advisors. They're the ones who grade your papers. They are the ones who are going to partner with you to do whatever it is that you want to do. I don't know what else to say. I'm really proud to be at this place. I'm humbled that they let me be here with them. Um, you are joining a group of faculty, staff, students, and alumni that I, there's no no comparable group in this world. Um, so I, I just hope that um, I'll see you in person in the fall and I can touch you. Not really, but kind of like at least maybe. Um, and that we'll all be together uh, because we got a lot of exciting things planned. And uh, this is a great place to be and to live and to work and learn. And um, I just would love to see each and every one of you um, in August, again, celebrate that 100th year women voting. Y'all better be registered to vote too, because I'm not messing around when it comes to that either. And 
and let's come together and, and do amazing things together. So with that, I'll stop um, talking. And if there's any questions, um, we can do that. Or, or maybe you need to go on to your next thing. But thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. And, um, you know, let's, let's do some amazing stuff. We do have a few questions. Um, so okay. Kayla Humes has asked, are classes more discussion-based instead of lecture-based, or is it the other way around? Oh, so that's going to be dependent upon the field. And it's also going to be dependent you know, on the faculty member, but many of our courses are, are mixed, right? There's some lecture, some discussion. There's some lecture, some active learning, right? So you might hear a lecture on, you know, chemistry, and then the next day do like problems together and work through things, work in the lab, things like that. Um, some courses are very discussion-based. Um, it just depends on the field and the faculty's approach to that. But I, I will say that this is a place in which you can't really hide, even in a lecture class. There's not a hundred people. There's not a thousand people. There's just, you know, you and maybe 25, 30 friends. So a faculty member standing in front of that classroom, they see each, each and every one of you, right? And they know when you're not there. So even if it's a class in which the faculty member is more or less talking in front of you, um, there's still an expectation for interaction and questions and back and forth because it's small. And that's, that's the best way for you to improve on your education. Um, we have another question about um, dual enrollment and AP classes transferring um, and what students need to do in order to get those credits to transfer. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, on the website, there's a, uh, and your uh, counselors can also connect you with this, there's a uh, transfer student page. So even if you're not, uh, even if you're for a first time college student who has transfer credit like AP, you can go in and fill out the form and it'll go to our, and send it to our registrar and she'll then tell you which courses those um, AP credits or other dual enrollment or transfer credits that you took at a college will count towards which Sweetbriar courses. And then um, that will be information that you would have. To have those credits actually show up on your Sweetbriar transcript, we need official transcript from the college that awarded the credit or an official um, report of your scores from the College Board for AP credit. And IB is treated the same in June. Yep. Mm -hmm. IB would be the same. Exactly. Yep. Um, I had a couple people ask about the optional campus tour showing dorms. Yes, that will happen. Um, there's also a video on our website that you can check out later today if you'd like um, that has a tour of a couple different dorms so you can kind of see the different variety. Mm -hmm. And then the last question is um, if you could talk a little bit more about undergraduate research. Sure. Um, our faculty are always doing independent studies and independent research with students. Um, it's not necessarily something you would do in your first semester. And if you ask me, I probably wouldn't let you. Um, I want you to come in and take your courses and do well in them that first semester, no matter, no matter what, a, coming to college is an adjustment. And it's really important to me that you have a good first, you know, you start strong. Um, but then once you have a relationship with some faculty or you're interested in, you learn what they're doing, then you reach out to them and you say, I'm interested in an independent study. And our faculty are more than uh, willing to work with you to do that. And that can be uh, an independent project in English and creative writing, where you're analyzing a set of writing or, or producing your own, or in a research lab um, in chemistry or engineering, um, or doing independent composition work and music or performance and music, all of those options are available. Great. Thank you so much, Dean Garrett. We really appreciate you taking time out of your morning or afternoon to help us out and um, meet all of our incoming students.